Oh my gosh, good afternoon. Today we're talking about stigmas, barriers, judgment, stereotyping, and tapping into the power and the significance of natural highs. What we're gonna be talking about today is talking about uncomfortable growth. Yeah, my name's Erin Strayer. I'm the host of the Erin Strayer Show. I'm an accelerated business strategist, growth consultant, and interventionist. And while our guest is off screen, <laughs> I'm going to talk about her. You guys, if you are here, make sure you say hi. Let us know that you're here. If this, um, this is gonna be like some massive information for you. So please, please, please share this video out with your tribe um, because I think you're gonna find some value in what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, what else do we need to talk? Oh, questions. As we're rolling it through, yeah, if you have questions, absolutely drop them in the feed and we'll make sure we'll loop around and say hello and address those questions. So today, you guys, can I bring you on, Erin? Are you ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna talk. Oh, where is she? She's right there. You ladies and gentlemen, this is Erin Law, your Patterson, and I am going to be talking. I'm going to read off her screen, off my sheet for her, because she has a list like this long of impressive things that she does in this world. And um, not only is she a speaker, a writer, an author, a podcast host, she's an addiction counselor, she's an, a humanitarian. We're going to talk a lot about that. She's a wife, she's a mom, she's a world traveler, and she's a continuous doer of goodness. She's known around her field and in her world as the goodness chick and the drug lady at the same time. And we're going to talk about that. She's got her second book coming out in June. We're super excited about that. And um, what else did I miss? Did I miss anything? She massively empowers like parents to be better parents and help them communicate with their children. You guys, I'm just kind of going to lay the, the groundwork here for you. Um, Erin's in her car because she's in between um, um, appointments. And she's talking out in her car. She's waiting for some some uh, connection issues here. And we're going to keep on rolling while that happens. So, you guys, Erin is like this amazing connector of people. She loves to make sure uh, she likes to, to reduce the stigmas and the yicky talk and the feeling around um, stereotyping and judgment and um, all the barriers that come specifically with mental health issues because mm -hmm. let's just like be real we all got them mm -hmm. <laughs> don't we like yeah. do we all have them Erin every mm -hmm. single one of us have them don't yeah. we are you there can you hear me Oh, can you hear me? there you hear are. Me? Okay, I'm can adjusting. You? Can you hear me? Oh, son of a gun. Okay. How about that? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you for sure. You're frozen, but I can hear you. So. Okay. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I definitely think when it comes to mental health, um, unfortunately, there's still a stigma attached, uh, attached to it. I think from like, you know, our kids to um, as adults, and I think until we're able to kind of peel back that stigma and make it approachable and something we dialogue about really constantly, um, we're going to have barriers. And so that's one of the things I try to approach with, with goodness chick. I certainly don't have all the answers, but I do know for a fact that uh, when we, we put barriers and obstacles in front of us when it comes to mental health and addiction, it does more harm than good. And so that's kind of one of the things I try to focus on and, and chip away at things, misconceptions, um, making people hopefully more comfortable with the topic that we need to be talking about. Um, I broach it with high school kids, with parents in the community. I do a lot of public speaking, um, but I think we can kind of be weird about it. And when it affects like more, I mean, way, way more than half of us, three quarters of us, whether it's ourselves or people we love, like we just, we need to stop whether it's pride or whether it's um, I'll say ignorance or it's hesitation or discomfort. We need to step back, let those fall to the wayside and start kind of staring at, you know, square in the face. Yeah. And um, I know that I love that you take stuff on head on <laughs> when it comes to this issue and you're so super passionate about it. And um, I wanted to bring you on this month because we're talking, you know, this month kind of umbrella of my topic this month is social media engagement. And I think that your your removal of those stigmas 
with what specifically you do also coincides with how we show up and we appear, yeah. right? And how we engage with our people online. And um, I think that that so many of your, the same things apply, right? That the mental health stigmas apply in everything that every single one of us do. And, and I really wanted to bring you on to talk about those things, how, what they look like, how to, how do we get to start removing those and deal with them? Right. I, I mean, I think I, I could probably talk for five hours, which I won't do to bore <sighs> everybody, but um, just kind of like, you know, uh, condensing it a little bit. I think it, it's one of the first steps is talking with our kids openly our family members or spouses or friends where we can dialogue about it where it's like, you know, what, what does anxiety look like? What does depression look like? Um, like when it's something that surfaces, it doesn't mean we're defective. Um, and it, it means that, you know, we have some things we need to work on and what are some ways that we can do that? We're yeah. talking about how counseling to me, when I work particularly with, with, with teenagers, I tell kids when I work with them, every single person that's a teenager needs to go to a counselor at some point or as, as teens, because you're a teenager and now you compound that with social media, compound that with mental health. And we, when we make that door more accessible and open, instead of like, there's something wrong with me, why am I going to counseling instead of, wow, this is a gift. Like everything is terminology. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've had hundreds of conversations where people are like, well, what's wrong with me? Why do I have to go to a counselor? And I try to kind of readjust it where it's like, this is a gift. It's like we take the time and one of my things is, you know, now it's getting nice out, thank God. Um, you know, we, we open up our windows in our houses, we get the lemon pledge out, we, we do our cleaning um, of our house that we're in like whatever 16 hours out of the day, eight hours out of the day. But we don't think that we should do the same for a body that we live in. It's just crazy to me um, where everybody needs to go to a counselor at some point in season in their life. It's, it's you know, talking about when anxiety, right? What does that look like? It's talking about if, you know, I, I think social media plays such a large role with so many people of all ages at this point, especially, you know, 23 on, on down, where they've grown up with nothing but social media. And we're seeing an explosion with anxiety, depression, kids finding their sole source of identity and how many likes they're getting, you know, um, on, on the Twitter feed, how many retweets, how many, you know, who's responding to my, you know, my Snapchat story. And we're in dangerous territory because as adults we're lagging behind and it's impossible to keep up with the social media component but when we don't dialogue about who are you really your self-image your self-worth and and when we find that in something that's just a cell phone we're in trouble and so it's kind of redirecting our kids where is your self-worth what is that found and what are, how are we grounded and when we're finding red flag moments of anxiety or insecurity or whatever you fill in the blank it's having that platform to be able to talk to a parent talking to a counselor, talking to an adult, not a teenager. Um, and us as adults talking, 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 because when we don't talk about it, the stuff stays in our head and not good things happen. Yeah. So um, that's kind of my stand because I, I, every one of us in this day and age, we, we look at, and I do, I think the last three years in particular, um, there's been an explosion when it comes to the correlation with the depersonalization of our ability to interact. It's all on the cell phone. You tell somebody you have make a phone call. I, I don't want to make a phone call. I want to text because it's more comfortable and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's finding a balance where we don't lose our personal connection and we're beginning to lose our personal connection. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, I'm on my cell phone. It's part of what I do for my job, both as a high school counselor and also with goodness chick. Um, and I'm trying to be more vigilant and like, you know, I plug my phone in. Do I need my phone when I go for a walk? Do I need my phone really, you know, and it's kind of finding like that time to just breathe Mm -hmm. Um, and I absolutely think until we begin to kind of kick it in the bud and address it, we're going to have some crazy issues escalating as time goes on if we don't address it fully. Yeah. So that's my, that's my two cents with that. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I have a 12 year old. I know some people that are watching have younger kids too. Um, and it's, it's difficult and it's a, it's an, oh, on, it's crazy purpose. Difficult. Yeah. It's an on purpose discussion mm -hmm. like walk away put it down like it's not allowed at dinner right like for anybody at the table like cell phones aren't there you guys this is like yeah. this and we set the example as parents and that's really really hard at times because um you know it's like well i need to write this text back or i need to do you know and i've been guilty of it i'm certainly not going to be a hypocrite here but it's being more 
intentional because they're watching us. And now you have a, whether it's a 12 year old or 15 year old or 19 year old, um, they're like, we're having kids that are addicted, like seriously addicted to their phones. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and then you look at, cause you know, I, I tell some of the top things that like, you know, your, your, your phones are a part of your kids. That's just the way it is right now. Right. And that's okay. But it's finding a balance. It's, you know, my kid doesn't have it at dinner time. My, you know, when, and us as well, when you go to bed, I'm like, dude, listen, like, are you on call 24 seven? No, you're not. Okay. So you get an old school, um, alarm clock. You don't need buzzing and, and texting and tweets at two in the morning where it's now affecting their ability to sleep. Phone gets turned in at the end of the night. Um, you know, to like, I have access, you know, to your social media sites. I'm friends with you on your social media sites. And I have a lot of parents that cringe at that. Dude, that's the issue where if you give them full fledged access to the little super cyberspace in their palm of their hand, they're going to get into stuff because they're kids. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I, I did a presentation not to go totally off topic here uh, last week on human trafficking. And when I tell you it is here, it is real and they're using social media and, and too many times as adults were like, well, I don't really want to know. Well, this isn't like, did my kid eat too many cookies at dinner time? You know, this is human trafficking. This is real. And we are in a war that way too many people are just, lackadaisical about and it like seriously drives me crazy um and i think there's nothing wrong with cell phones but it's being friends with your kids on their social media sites it's like what are you posting um you know to their snapchat stories and i will promise you they're more hesitant to and they will think about what and less impulsive what they're going to post if mom or dad or guardian are on those different apps with them that's just the way of life and i thank god that i didn't have i didn't have these things when i was in high school I was a good kid, but I was a teenager, dude. Like, and you have kids not now as 20, 25 year olds not getting jobs or getting into their choice of college because of one impulsive decision. And we're impulsive. Your brains aren't fully formed. So you're going to do like, you're going to do stupid things. And whether they're sending a nude or they're sending, you know, that they're, they're doing a, a, a grav bong hit or they're, you know, telling somebody middle finger, fill in the words. And then that school gets a hold of that or that, that job. And they don't want you. Right. The, and so it's like things at 16, you can't really wrap your head around. Yeah. They yeah, don't they realize that it, that it actually leaves actually leave the print. Forever. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. 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 And it's like once you're tagged on something, because you'll get like, well, I was tagged. and I, Well, you were tagged, dude. And it's forever. And I've worked with the police. I've worked with the FBI. And it's amazing. I'm like, this is so cool. What they can find. They can find you. And so it's like, you know, it, it comes to the same thing with colleges and, and the workplace. Everything's about money. And if they consider you high risk because you're already posing a risk, you know, before you, you get that job or you're in that college, they don't want you. And they have every right to, to decline and say thank you and mazel tov and have a great day. But um, they don't have to hire you or accept you. And so this is one of the things I try to hit with, with parents and with kids. Like think before you post. Think before you respond, and and there's a million directions we could go with this, with cyberbullying to, you know, kids struggling with a higher level of anxiety to just making decisions that literally affect them for the rest of their lives. Yeah, yeah, it's so tough too, and I know that that's so ingrained in you is to make sure that 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 footprint and that you know how you're engaging in your social media like reflects everything, even as adults. Like yeah huge for you too. And I think for us as, as adults and entrepreneurs, that that's a, what are we projecting and what are we like, what are we posting on our personal page that's out different than what's going on in our groups, you know, our closed groups yeah, or even on our business pages. Right. And how does that all trans transcribe and um, go forward? It's, it, we, we need to be mindful of that and what that looks like, I think. Um, well, cause it's forever. And then and you could say, well, it's not fair to judge somebody, but we judge, you know? And one of my things are, you know, I'm an addictions counselor. I work with kids. I've been a youth counselor in the past. Like I'm, I'm you know, people kind of know who I am in my community and kind of like a lot of different places. And one of my things is, you know, I'm obviously, obviously of legal age to drink alcohol and I'll have a beer or a glass of wine, whatever but you'll never see a picture with me with me holding something because, and people are like, that's crazy. Well, that's a part of like, when you're in public education, I've taken it seriously for a long time. You're, you're putting yourself on a plateau or you're in whatever line of work you have to be careful. And I think it's easy to have your guard down. Like, well, I didn't really mean this or this picture. I just think you gotta be really careful. And, and I, you know, 
I'm all about enjoying life and, but I'm about enjoying life and being safe and being responsible and not being a butthead is essentially kind of one of my things, you know, just don't be a butthead makes life a lot better. Yeah. I, I, I love that. And how do you feel like, um, you know, cleaning our brains of all of this, you know, not being a butthead going through watching what we do, watching our kids, watching what we post, not having the judgment and the stigma and the barriers, right? Like, how do we start cleaning our heads of that mental garbage? Like, well, I think if you look at just the mental garbage, you'd freak out um, and then say, I have a lot of crap to deal with, but we all have a lot of crap with to deal with. So I think it's really like I'm, I'm about, because I'm wicked ADD, I need post-it notes for everything. Um, it's about writing things down. What are your goals? Like, okay, I'm anxious or I'm struggling with this or I don't have time for self-care. So it's like, let's reprioritize things. And it's like, you know what, I'm going to start seeing a counselor once a week. Or on the other end of it, I'm going to start being, you know, physically getting my my serotonin levels pumping. And like, I, I talk to so many people that like, what do you do when you go home? Well, I sit in, uh, and, and I watch television or I just take a five hour nap. Like, that's not how we were wired to be. You need to be, you need sun exposure. You need, you know, being interaction. It, it, you need to get your blood pumping to the physical end of it. I also think to me, one of my, my, my core factors in life and us being well and spring cleaning is not allowing the world to revolve around us. I don't care what age you are. Um, we are guilty of that. And when I, and I, I tell you, dude, I've seen it change people's lives where it's giving back once a month, you need to do something that is not about you. And whether that, you know, you live somewhere, you know, you bring your bag lunch uh, to work and on your, you know, once a week you hand a bag lunch to somebody else or you buy them a cup of coffee or you're volunteering at a soup kitchen or an orphanage. Uh, I mean, that's what my husband and I, and my son, we're going to spend 10 months doing, but that's been one of my founding like layers in the foundation of my, the program I created at the school I work at. And even outside of this, it's giving back, giving back, giving back because as, as people, when we hear people kind of lecturing us, like make good decisions and, and don't just be about you, you tune out. You're like, all right, dude, I've heard this a thousand times, but when you're watching lessons happen before you, it changes your life. Um, and I tell you, I've seen people of all ages, uh, like it just like blow the veil off their, their, their eyes were like, God, life is more than just me. And when we realize that it's not just, wow, my, my hands can help somebody, but it's also like, okay, my stuff's really not as bad. And if it's, if it's really crappy, what can I do to feel less crappy? And part of that, it, it is giving back. And that sounds really strange, but I mean, I've dealt with some kids and, and, and adults with some crazy, crazy heartbreaking stuff. And I've seen them get kind of their high on natural high work, dude, I can change the world. And one of my favorite songs by Jack Johnson, Ben Harper is can change the world with my own two hands. And I'm a big believer in that. Um, giving back, giving back, giving back. And there's no excuse to not be able to give back. And I, I, the challenges I give a lot of times require no money. You know, I'm, I'm doing a homeless, uh, homeless outreach in a few weeks. And I'm like, you can't spend any money. You go around your neighborhood, you ask relatives, get some, you know, socks, you bring out some shorts and sweatshirts and we're bringing it over to Philly and we're going to go feed 150 people. And it's kind of rad. You know, um, because we use, well, I don't have, I don't have the money. Well, it's not about money. It's about your time and it's about thought and it's about heart. If those are a few, it's just a few, a few things. Yeah. You guys, I, I absolutely love that you do that, that it's a once a month and once a month. Yes. Yeah. On purpose and there's no money, right? Like you're not like dipping in your pocket and going, you're, right. you're taken from what you already have. And you're giving, right? Yeah. We all have way more than we need, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And what does that do for you when you do those things? Like you personally, what does it do for you? Um, I like, I, I, it's funny. My next book that's coming out, not to plug my book, but I'll plug my yeah, book. Plug it. <laughs> it's, the first chapter is actually called Get High. And uh, I remember the first, like I, I showed it to them. They're like, well, I get it. You guys are a drug lady. And I'm like, but get high. And it's like we automatically think that substances. And to me, right. get, learning to get naturally high on life, and one of the biggest parts of that is volunteering. And I love, like, you know what? There's so much crap that goes on during life. Sometimes. I mean, crazy crap. It's heavy. It wears you. And then, you know what? I leave it behind. You go to a soup kitchen. You're behind, you know, the line. You're serving mashed potatoes. You're, you're handing out cups of juice. Everything goes away. And watching smiles on people's faces that you helped. Um, I'm in, you know, our, our food pantry at the school I work at and I'm with kids bagging food, um, for other kids. And it's like, it just, to me, it's honest to God, like a, a source of, 
piece rejuvenation. And when I am, am fortunate enough to be able to watch kids, I like stand back and I watch them engage and watch them giving and watch that veil literally coming off their, their faces were like that I can make a difference. And that like, holy cow, like humbled, but they're stoked at the same time. To me, man, that is like, holy crap. It's amazing. Um, and it's, it's empowering and it's, um, we all need that. I do. I think it's like we get so, between our cell phones and life and our, and our stresses and we get so mired in the muck that it wears us out if we let it. And so for me, you know, I, I started, God, I'm going to say probably the first year I started at, at this uh, high school, 16, 15 years ago. And every summer I would go abroad and, and do a volunteer project till right before I got married. But being able to pass that on to the kids I work with. Um, and, and different events I speak at, like people will say, what's one thing I could do for my kids? I'm like, you get them volunteering every single month. It shouldn't just be Christmas and Hanukkah, you know, and Easter. Uh, that's, that's no, it's gotta be wired. It's gotta be a part of their lifestyle. And when it does, it will change their world. Oh, I got goosies all over me because there's, yeah, but it's stoked. It's like, it's stoked, get stoked. You know, and I, I, I have kids ask me, I swear to you at least once a month, they're like, yo, Miss Lala, I'm not going to tell anybody, but do you smoke weed? And I'm like, listen, thank you for the question. I appreciate it. And I'm not bashing anyone who smokes weed. Um, but I'll say this. I think too many times with alcohol, with weed, with whatever, we we rely. It's an emotional crutch instead of like, are you having a glass of wine because you dig it? Or are you having a glass of wine every day when you come home from work because it's what is the one thing that can just – your escape. Again, not judging or the same thing with weed. I think we have a lot of people on, on, that are artificially living. Uh, on emotional crutches. And I'll come right back to kids and say like, you know, I, I've definitely, I mean, dear Lord, I would have green leaves coming out of my head if I could back in the day. I smoked a lot of weed, but for me, it was not about smoking because I really dug it to be on. It was, it was where I was emotionally, I just, I was self-medicating. Um, and to me, I'll say, yo, you know what? Like I can have a bong right here. I could have a case of beer. I could have a surfboard. And for me, when my day stuff hits the fan I, and I'm, I'm very transparent with them, I surf. I don't want to be around anybody. I don't want my cell phone or I'm grabbing my kid and we're going for a run on the beach. Um, and it's finding your high because if we don't, then we find other ways to get high and life wow. is way too short. Um, it's way too short. I mean, I could, I could leave today, you know, pull out of my driveway and I could be dead. And that's yeah. to me, that's not a morbid thing. It's reality. And so if we live to, to be of quality and if we live, I believe to make an imprint on the heart of others, and we live recklessly in a way that's responsible and just passionately and intentionally. I think the world is a better place. Um, you know, I, I do. And I, I have, you know, kid, I think about God, I got an email the other day. We lost another uh, alumni in our school district. And, and it's like person after per people are dropping dead with addiction and suicide and hurt. And it's like, we need to have our eyes open more with all these hurt. We need to be more, Gosh, uh, intentional because we have addiction is is busting at the seams and it's every there's no face to addiction anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think when we kind of, you know, take all these different angles and approaches, we can make a difference. But until we kind of are willing to take that step back and be honest and be intentional and sit down and dialogue about things that make us uncomfortable, we're in trouble. Yeah. So and I'm the least negative person I think you will ever meet. Um, but, you know, I. I I mean, it's when you're, I don't know. I mean, I think anyone that works in education in particular or, or, you know, as a counselor, especially in education in the school, you see you're on the front lines, dude, and you see it every single day. And um, it could be it's tiring and it's heartbreaking because you love the kids you meet. I mean, dude, they're your kids. Right. So. So do you see it? Do you see the work that you do? We're, we're coming down on our time real quick, but I really want to. Um, do you see the work that you do ref like? outside and the volunteering and your natural highs reflecting in your presence and your interaction socially, like in your, with your book promo, with your, like, can I tell them that you're like taking your three-year-old and you're going and hitting yeah, 20 man. countries in 10 months yeah. doing this volunteer thing? Like, how do you see that? you what you have done and chosen to put in your life by these natural highs and these like um your volunteering and then the people that follow you what does that look like like that connection 
Well, it's, I guess it's weird. Um, I mean, so like I'm going to be, we're leaving July 9th. We're um, going to be essentially gone for 10 months and I'm going to be keeping up my goodness chick thing, which is like, you know, life and parenting and, and, and trends and all that mental health and addiction. It's heavy stuff, which I dig, but it's also now kind of the offshoot is going to be, and I, my heart has felt heavy where we're going overseas to some pretty interesting areas of the world that most people have never been to. Right. Um, and, third and, world, three, third. Yes. I mean, I've been, I mean, I've like, I've been all over the place, but just, I love going places off safe but off, off the, the beaten track a little bit. And so with that, I guess about a month ago, I'm like kind of heavy on my heart is like, we're going away. We're going to, I'm going to be tapping into and connecting with different organizations, soup kitchens, orphanages, um, different outreach kind of ministries, if you will. And on my YouTube page, but also doing a PayPal thing, if people feel kind of led or called, they can donate to that cause. Um, I think it's kind of cool. Um, I'm going to be doing interviews on my podcast, uh, which I really already do. My goodness, chick, about really essentially people with not just parenting, but people who are changing the world, um, people who um, are on the front lines, people who are making a difference. And I feel like it's been really neat the different people I've interacted with personally in my life here and in the states, and and just where how big the world is, but how small it is. And when you get people stoked about doing good things, it's kind of like this amazing domino effect. And so I'm, I'm going hard till July 9th, just promoing, talking. I'm so excited for my second book to come out, July 1st, Higher Level of Goodness, Lessons from the Drug Lady, and that's what my kids call me. Yeah, and I mean, the, you know, the drug lady can, in certain areas, you know, could, could be interpreted differently. But, right. um, you know, but I, I and, and it's kind of my signing off as a drug lady and, and my full cap on as the goodness chick. And, I, and I'm excited to, to, to watch other people get excited, not just about what we're doing, but I'll say to them, like, you can do this. And I'm not saying you need to go to Romania. You need to go, you know, to like Greece and Israel, but you can do this in your own backyard. And so for the f- past 20 years of my life, I've been doing this in my backyard and now kind of extending this where I get to be able to do this with my husband, my three-year-old son, who's going to be doing this with us and, and helping. And I believe it will sink in. I want this to be a part of his inner fiber. Um, and I want to raise money. I want to help people. And, um, you know, I'm excited for the paths I'm going to cross with different people. Um, and I mean, I, I've, I've, this is, gosh, been a 43 country so far as of this year. And uh, I'm stoked to kind of kick that up a notch to, you know, 15, 20 more countries and just learn more about other human beings um, and life lessons and, and the power of goodness. And I just think it's amazing. And I'm going to say it again because she just kind of breezed over it. July, she's leaving for 10 months. <laughs> oh. Going to get 22 countries with her husband and three year old son. Volunteering, giving back, doing for others, yeah. getting that natural high. Yeah, I'm stoked. I'm super excited. Will you drop the, drop the links in here when we're done? So yeah, if yeah. people feel like supporting your cause and giving, you know, giving to you so that you can give to them. Um, that that link's available. Um, also, what was the name? What's the name of your book that's coming out in June? Um, it's going to be on Amazon, but it's a higher level of goodness. June first, it comes out. Uh, lessons from the drug that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Is there no, pre-order I, a week, a week. I'm working on it. I'm like Michigan ah. right now. But um, you you can hop on my Facebook goodness chick page. I encourage you to do that. I, I have it's cool. Like kids in their twenties to people in their seventies who follow and kind of gleaning from different aspects of life to, you know, hop on my podcast, goodness chick. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, and I encourage you to follow us, um, you know, no strings attached and my book will be out. I, I do have, my first book is peace, love, and goodness lessons from the drug lady, which is available on Amazon. Um, and I do, I think life's a beautiful thing. And when we, you know, with what you're doing, I say rock on, it's all about kind of empowering other people and spreading goodness without sounding too cliche. Oh, so, so good. We will you loop around like when we're done off of here and like later this afternoon when you don't have appointments. <laughs> Next I'm like yeah. I'm coming in. I promise. My kids. Drop those. Drop those links in here so yeah. people. Can yeah, absolutely. Follow your, group, follow your podcast. Grab your book if they want it. Your links to Amazon for your book. Um, and for sure, you know, so that we can donate to your cause. Um, and like follow you. Like this. Yeah. This is like a global. This is a global thing that you're doing, this global outreach. And um, it's really interesting how how your tribe and your engagement grows 
with you. So yeah, very cool. It's been neat. It, you know, from a year ago to now, it's just it's it's just going in a different direction that I wouldn't have assumed. And it's just wonderful when you kind of let things flow where it goes. Um, you know, and it's 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 a cool thing. So I'm extremely stoked and feel free to follow. And, um, you know, and, and I say, you know, pass it on your friends, your family members. And uh, it's neat. It's very neat. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. And, and life's a journey, baby. Oh, my gosh. Aaron, thank you so much. This has been the Aaron Squared today. <laughs> Aaron Lawyer, Lawyer Peterson has been with us. Patterson, sorry, has been with us today talking about how to remove the stigmas um, and the judgment and the barriers around um, mental health and to incorporate volunteering and natural highs. And that's what we've been covering today. And I really appreciate your time with us, Erin. It's been valuable. Yeah, Lots of really, you. really goodness. And the amazing cause that you're doing in your why in this world is um, very near and dear to me. And I've had goosies on me this whole time we've been talking. So much love to you. Super, super amazing amount of success to you and, and safety on your trip. And I can't wait to follow you and watch your Ooh. Thanks, Watch your buddy. next moves and who you're touching and changing and shifting and, and helping with your with your efforts. So much yeah. love to you. Thanks, everybody, for being here live with us on the Aaron Strayer Show. And if you're watching the replay, make sure you let us know you're watching the replay. We'll see you right back here soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.